welcome to a brand new video and we've got a very extremely juicy one today how to start a social media marketing agency in 2021 now if you've watched a previous training on social media marketing agency on how to start one potentially on how to grow one my promise to you is that this will be the most detailed video that you've watched up to now all you gotta do is it's gonna be a long one you can probably see that i'm not sure how how, how long i'm gonna go for but there's quite a lot of slides there's quite a lot of uh, in-depth training on this uh, video so my recommendation to you is go ahead get a pen get a notebook take a few notes uh be engaged get rid of distractions and uh without further ado let's get right into it so how to start a social media marketing agency in 2021 here is all this stuff that we're gonna cover number one what has changed Number two, picking the right avenue. Number three, building a monopoly agency. What do I mean, what, what do I mean by that? I'll explain in just a bit. Uh, number four, narrowing down into a sub niche. Five, picking a hybrid e com service. Six, building a, an A team. Not just any team, but an A team. And finally, signing e com clients. So, Fast and Fast is a bit of a, a you know prelude. I'll talk about this and, and why this makes a lot of sense going forward. But a few things about what has changed, um, you know, compared to last year, right? Because I didn't just say how to start a social media marketing agency, right? That's not the point of this video. The point of this video is how to start a social media marketing agency in 2021. So we need to be aware of the fact that, you know, the current social landscape is different to what it used to be, uh, you know, one year ago, two years ago, five years ago. Okay? So what has changed? It's quite a lot, uh, as you may be aware of. Um, a lot has changed. You know, a, a lot of ha has happened in the past uh, year. A lot has changed in the past year. And so a few things that we want to keep in mind is the impact that 2020 has had on this year, right? And the impact that 2020 will have had will have had for the next five years. And so the current social landscape has, a, has had a massive uh, influence on the growth of e-commerce. As millions stayed at home, global e-commerce traffic hit a record break in 22 billion monthly visits in June 2020. And that is uh, a statista.com uh, uh, stat right there. Um, also, e-commerce has almost doubled in market cap in the past year and has grown more than uh, has grown more than in the past 10 years combined. So quite a lot of growth for e-commerce. And finally, moving with the times. From beginner brands looking to land to get a land grab to physical stores and services realizing that they have to go online otherwise they're pretty much out of business to big brands going harder than ever as they realize the massive opportunity that is ahead of them with their e-com side. There's never been more demand for e-com growth. There's never been more demand for e-com growth. And that is one of the biggest assets to build. I'll talk about that in just a bit. One of the biggest assets to build right now because everyone is looking for one thing as everything is shifting online from the you know beginning brands who are looking to get into the e-com space, right? Um, and, and have maybe a, quite a bit of a budget to put into that that uh, that uh, you know uh, e-com store to the physical stores and services going online to the big brands who we're operating online, we're killing it online, but I realizing I gotta go harder than ever and build this, you know, build, build this billion dollar uh, brand, right? Uh, so there's never been more demand for e-com growth and the people who can conquer that are the people who are gonna win in this unprecedented uh, landscape. But I'll come back to that in just a bit because the first thing that we're gonna do is we, we wanna pick the right avenue. And what I mean by that is what industry are we gonna operate in? Now, it can really boil down into two things, right? Um, it can either be a, a traditional SMMA, okay, or it can be an e-commerce marketing agency. And uh, you know, to to kind of um, you know compare the two, uh, you can see that there's they're both two cameras, right? Uh, they're both two you know types of agencies, but one is uh, way more uh, you know it, it actually applies for for the modern times, uh, actually works for uh, for the modern times. The other one is cool to have it maybe uh, you know. Uh, at your home um, is, is a cool uh, little artifact, but it uh, doesn't really, you know, get the, get the job done uh, in the most profitable, effective way possible. The other camera is literally the, the camera that I'm using to, to record this. Actually, I'm not too sure. I think it is. Uh, don't call me that because I'm not a, a, you know, camera expert, but, you know, the other camera gets the job done effectively. One of the best cameras in the market, right? Um, and that is really the comparison. And that, that's really what the comparison between a traditional social media marketing agencies, uh, agency servicing local businesses and an e-commerce marketing agency helping e-com brands scale to eight, you know, seven, eight, nine figures uh, actually looks like. So a bit about both, right? The old way of doing things, social media marketing agency as MMA. What is this old way of doing things and why does it not work anymore? Now, 
in most cases, the niche was mostly local businesses. So it could have been a restaurant, it could have been you know dentist, um, it could have been real estate. Um, it was all based on you know it, it was all based around helping uh, local businesses thrive, right? Now the service and the offer. Basically, what people would do is they would pick one service and disregard everything else, right? Agency owners would look at growth purely from a Facebook ad lens, right? They would build a Facebook ads agency for a dentist, right? Or helping dentists, you know, um, get more patients using Facebook ads or helping, you know, uh, beauty, uh, beauty salons uh, get more uh, clients uh, using Google ads, right? And they'd be blinded to all the interconnected parts of a business that are responsible for growth. So they would, uh, they, uh, another thing is they don't have an irresistible offer. And there's really no distinction between their offer and their service, right? Their, their service is their offer. And what I mean by that is a service could be Facebook ads, right? The offer could be growth, you know, profitable growth uh, to seven figures, right? That, that could be an offer. Um, so in most cases, in especially for social media marketing agency, the service was the offer. Um, and what happens when you do that is there's really no distinction and no differentiation with other agencies because other agencies are also offering the same service, right? And so what happens is you get a bunch of agencies who all look like, right? Um, and so you start a Facebook ads agency helping real estate uh, clients, right? Cool, but get in the queue because so have all, you know, so have uh, another 5,000 uh, people, right, in the space. And so there's no much uh, differentiation there. Result, performance is not tangible because the KPI, the key performance indicator, what we're optimizing for, the result that we're trying to get for these clients is leads. Now, I'll talk about what a lead actually is, but understand that the performance is not tangible, right? And so when you tell a client, yeah, you know, we're getting new great results. Okay, cool, but I don't see any money in my bank account. It's, it's, it's a really hard way to explain the, 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 the value of your service. Um, next, the message, it's not specific, right? Instead of seeking to understand a particular niche and speak their language, they will try to encompass and appeal to uh, to to as many uh, types of prospects, right? So, a lot of people, even if they, you know, uh, the people that actually pick like a specific um, uh, niche within local business, you know, good good for them, right? Um, they will still struggle when it comes to the service and the offer, but at least they're doing a better job than the people who try to appeal to a wide range of different niches, right? Uh, maybe they pick e-commerce as a whole, or maybe they pick, you know, they'd be doing um you know, dentists, restaurants, uh, you know, beauty salons and a bunch of other local businesses, right? Um, and so what happens then is if you don't have a, a very specific group of people that you're servicing, right? Then you cannot tailor your message according to their pain points, right? Their uh, limiting beliefs, uh, their, actual, you know, their, their, their triggers, their, you know, their goals and ambitions in life, right? And those are, you know, those, I can assure you, those are very different depending on the type of prospect and the type of business that they run. Make sense? So, that's the message. And the final thing is the point of difference. There's really no point of difference here, right? They've tried their best to fit in. So their mindset is, let me, you know, the, the mindset is instead of, instead of um, thinking, how can I, you know, what are the, the ways that I can stand out? The mindset is, what are the ways that I can fit in, right? How can I copy what other people who are having success, how can I copy what they're doing, right? And so they've tried, uh, you know, they, they've uh, tried their best to fit in, to copy what the top uh, people were doing. And as a result, they struggle to cut through the noise. That is why, you know, th that's one of the reasons why if you look at a lot of people who have a SMMA or social media marketing agency, they all look the same. Same website, same service, same outreach methods, same message templates, right? Same um, methods of acquisition, same platforms that they're using, same strategy. It's all the same and it's crazy, right? Um, it's, it's, it's crazy to think about. And uh, what happens is the end user builds walls around that type of outreach, that type of approach. Why? Because everyone is doing it, right? Uh, and so it's not very effective. And so they struggle to cut through the noise. It's the reason why most agency owners never actually sign a client. Um, and it's perplexing. You know, it's, it's perplexing. Um, it's it's, it's um, tough to hear. But the simple reason is most. You know, the the, the, the simple uh, fact is that most agency owners who start an agency do not ever sign a client. Uh, now, if you do things the right way, that is pretty much inevitable. Signing a client is pretty much inevitable. And in this presentation, in this video, that is what we're gonna be doing, okay? So you're watching the right video, but understand that the old way of social media marketing agency does not really work, especially in the current landscape. Now, here are some, uh, you know, to, to really hone in on, on this fact is, uh, you know, th these are some of the limitations of the traditional social media marketing agency model. The first being there's no irresistible offer. So I've thought, you know, I've, I've touched briefly on this, but going a bit deeper into this, right? The return is, an, is, is ambiguous, right? So the KPI is leads, we're optimizing for leads leads do not equal money you can see there uh, you can see on the slide there's a little diagram right 
we've got on the on the left hand side we've got a cold prospect on the right hand side of uh, the the timeline we've got a customer right now a lead is not a customer right it's definitely closer to being a customer than a cold prospect but it's not a customer right uh, a lead is not a customer and so the problem here is that the sale is not uh, is not uh, within your scope of control right so sure there can be a value attached to a lead but the sale is not under your control many local uh, business agencies run into the problem down below because they cannot demonstrate the uh, the value right and so what happens is since this um agencies are optimizing for a lead right they're telling the client hey i'm gonna get you this many leads right i'm gonna get you um, what is a lead it could be for example if you're doing restaurants right it could be someone who walks through the door to claim a free dessert or if you're then if you're doing dentist right it could be someone that walks through the door to claim a free teeth cleaning whatever it is or uh you know whatever it is right or a mouth clean whatever it is right or if you're doing a beauty salon it could be uh the customer who uh you know a, a lead that walks through the door to claim their free um you know uh nail uh you know to get their uh, nails done for free right for uh, i don't know 30 minutes uh, a 30 minute session right so that is a lead a lead has not purchased or spent any money yet right now who's responsible for converting that lead convert that person that you get to um that, that you have walked through the client's door into a customer the client does right and so it's not outside of our control and that can be very hard because the reality is uh you know the, the, the reality is the client the, the client has to be on point when it comes to, to the, the the sales right so you can train the client to close these leads but at the end of the day the client has to know what they're doing when it comes to um to uh selling right and so the money you make them is not within your control also, they cannot, you know, another thing to understand is with local businesses, especially, they can get away without using Facebook ads or paid ads, right? The reality is it's not as essential for a local business to implement online advertising. Why? Because there are many other uh, ways they can get traffic from, right? So street traffic elimination, right? So for example, um, you know, they, they they look at a bunch of, you know, they, you're deciding between two gyms, right? One is, I don't know, 10 miles from your house. The other one is a mile from your, uh, your, your house. If the 10 mile gym is you know maybe twice you know uh, two times better than than the gym that is uh, one mile from, from your house you're still probably going to pick the gym that is closer to your house simply because of the you know geographical limitation and elimination right so that's another thing to uh, to keep in mind uh and the offer is not irresistible they can do without it so that is you know th those are some of the limitations uh, the limitations when it comes to the offer um and this is a bit of a an example when it comes to uh, when you optimize for leads right and so uh, here we've got 10 leads right let's let's just say you've brought uh this client 10 leads right and the cost per lead was a dollar so that would be um ten dollars for those 10 leads now let's just say that um you know let, let's just say that the client closes uh 10 of those people so that would be one customer close and so you could say well the uh, you know the and, and let's just say that the average order value per customer is 100 bucks right so you could say that you've spent 10 bucks to produce 100 bucks however that's not always the case right and so uh that value is not you know the, the, it, it, sure you can attach a value to a lead but it's not money in the bank right and so the client still has to close those people make sense so those are the limitations of the traditional social media marketing agency model uh, and that's why it's very very limited because you want results of your service to be as tangible as possible if you want longevity right if you don't want longevity then make sure that you have a service that it ha does, you know has no tangible results but if you do want longevity you want a, a, a service that has a very tangible results because as long as you're making it very clear that you're making a client money you're never going to lose this client and also it's going to be much easier to sell new clients onto your service so what happened you know just a little um a brief uh, story I started off uh, with a with a local business agency, right? So I started off with a, um, you know, we're doing health centers and gyms. So I started off with a local business agency, and I did pretty okay, right? Maybe I got to five k a month, but the problem was that I run into two scenarios, right? So scenario number one was kind of the more of the negative pessimist uh, type of client, right? And so they would tell me, dude, you know, you're getting me a lot of leads, but the leads are not qualified, right? Um, the leads are weak, so they would blame the fact that. You know, I, I was getting them incredible leads, but and I, would, I was getting them a lot of leads, but they could not close the lead, and so they would blame the fact that they could not close the leads on the fact that the leads were weak, 
which directly correlates to my work, right? And so it would come back to bite me in the ass, whereas the real problem was that the fact, you know, the real bottleneck and the problem here was the fact that they could not close the leads, right? And so that's the first scenario. And the second scenario was more of the positive scenario, but still same, same uh, outcome, right? So they would tell me, Ham, your leads are amazing, right? You're doing an amazing job, but my team cannot close the lead. So let me actually train my team fast and, you know, we'll come back to you. They never actually do, right? But those are the two scenarios and they all resulted with me not having these clients, right? And they all resulted with me not having control of my destiny and not having control of my business. And look, if you are an entrepreneur and if you're looking to start a business, I'm guessing that what you want in your life is control over your finances, your time, your location. And so I started this business, but all of a sudden I didn't even have control over my value, right? Over, you know, the one thing that would actually you know, make me and help me get my dream life, which was my business. And so it wasn't really a great equation. Now, another limitation of the traditional social media marketing agency model is the fact that it's hard to land sales goals. And the reason why that is, is because it's a physical business, right? And so many local uh, business owners expect that human touch. In many cases, you're limited by location. So you cannot, you know, it, let's just say you, you, you start in a, um, a developing country, right? Well, you're limited by location if you're doing local businesses because you're not you cannot tap into to the worldwide economy because a lot of local business owners they they expect that human touch right even if you're based out in the US or the UK you're still limiting yourself right because you cannot tap into that worldwide economy and so you're limited maybe by city maybe by state right but a lot of uh, business owners expect that human touch before signing on also, there's a massive inability to automate. So the platforms that can be automated and scaled are all, uh, you know, they're all online based. Most local business owners aren't spending their day online, but instead they're running around uh, dealing with uh, clients and patients. So other methods of outreach would be, you know, that, that would be more suitable, like cold calling cannot be scaled. And so you've got agency owners cold calling for six, eight hours a day, or maybe sending out cold uh, emails for six to eight hours a day. And that's not scalable, right? And the reason why you cannot scale that is because Oftentimes, it's not bits in a computer. It's not zeros and ones, right? And so if it requires a human touch, if it requires your human flesh to carry out that outreach, right? To carry out those sales, which we'll talk about, by the way, at the end of the video on how to actually sign clients. But if you require that human element to carry out those sales, then the outcome is that it's not going to be scalable, right? And you're going to have to trade your time and, and energy uh, to actually sign these clients. Um, and that's the one thing that we have very limited of. So... Uh, the final thing is team, right? So most of our team have a physical presence. They work with each other every single day. So there's a bit of a bigger shock factor when hiring someone to do the job externally, right? I've had this happen, especially when I started my local business agency, uh, where they had quite a bit of resistance to hire a contractor because they expected the whole team to be in one single place, right? If you go to a gym, the people that work there are hanging out in, in, a, um, in a specific location, right? In specific, um, you know, uh, essentially the, the, the gym, right? Uh, but if you go to any online based business, like an e-commerce business, right? Everyone is pretty much online. Um, you know, they, maybe they have a bit of an office, but everyone could do the job um, uh, online and there wouldn't, uh, there would be no need for that, uh, you know, uh, physical presence. Third, it's hard to close sales calls, right? So the reason why that is, is because the, the, there's just a, a weaker pitch. The inability to show concrete dollar sign results and the fact that it's not absolutely vital for their success makes the pitch harder, right? And so these people do not necessarily, it's not absolutely vital for them to have your service. And so when they hear the pitch, sure, they see value in it, they see potential, but th there's no pain points right there, right? And so, um, you know, people move away from pain more than they move towards pleasure. And the idea of making more money or the idea of the massive potential that there is by going online is not as appealing as an e-commerce uh, e uh, business, which we'll talk about in just a bit, who absolutely needs to have online advertising because otherwise they're gonna dry out, right? Um, so that's uh, you know that, that's the first thing. And the second thing is traditional, right? So due to the physical nature of their business, they do not expect, um, you know, they expect that human touch. And so in many cases, you're limited by location, which limits the, 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 um, the group of people that you can actually target and reach out to. And the final thing is client experience suffers. So there's a cap on growth because your value and impact is limited because there's only so much you can grow, right? If you're running ads for a gym, right? There's only, there's a maximum capacity. There's a specific maximum capacity. There's a cap on growth, right? Whereas if you're running ads for a local, uh, an e-com business, you could grow to a million a month, right? 
10 million a month and obviously things would have to be scaled and, and things would maybe break at scale but they could actually take that on right uh, they wouldn't have to like expand their physical location right and it would have it, it wouldn't be a huge ordeal um which would be in the case of local business and the final thing is hard to maintain satisfaction because one of the core pillars to satisfaction results it's outside of our control so there's three pillars to client satisfaction results communication and reporting and so if results which is one of the biggest pillars right is completely outside of our control and and if it's not as tangible as it could be then <laughs> It's not going to be. Uh, it's, it's going to be hard to maintain that satisfaction, and it's going to be hard to to have longevity with those clients. So, a bit about the new way of doing social media marketing agency, um, e-commerce marketing agency. So here it is out, and the first thing that I want to talk about is, okay, cool. I get that e-commerce is, you know, the, the way to go, right? But why not just build an e-commerce business, right? Why are you talking about the agency model? Like if you're so bullish, right? If you're so sure of e-commerce and, you know, clearly we can see, you showed us this statistics, right? We can we can see that e-commerce is going at a, an unprecedented rate. Why not just start an e-commerce business and, you know, ditch, ditch the, uh, the service-based uh, business model? Here's why, right? I want you to imagine that you've got a semi-successful Shopify store making you $10,000 a month. For a lot of people, $10,000 a month is, is a good number, right? And, and, and it's, by the way, not, not easy. Now, however, there's a lot of expenses and moving parts and you're taking home at the end of the day, at the end of the month, you're taking home 3K per month in profit, okay? Now I want you to imagine this. So, so that's the previous scenario and that's, you know, a lot of people when they think of e-commerce, they're like, oh, I want to start a, 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 a Shopify store, right? Now I want you to imagine this. So you've got one Shopify store, another one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? And for example, you've got one of those uh, Shopify stores um, is a successful Shopify store making 190k per month. Who needs, uh, which needs a uh, digital marketing, right? So maybe they've been, you know, they've tapped into email marketing. Maybe they're doing a bit of influencer marketing here or there, but they're in desperate need of digital marketing. Another uh, Shopify store of the nine that I just showed you could be another successful Shopify store making 80k per month, um, and they need digital marketing. Maybe they've done a bit of, you know, a bit of organic content on TikTok and, and they've grown that way, but now they need to take things up a level. They need to be able to spend $1 and get three, four, five, seven, you know, seven back, right? And that, and they need a, a predictable business because until they can, because they know this, right? Until they can spend money to acquire customers, they don't have a, a real business. They don't have a predictable business. And another uh, Shopify store out of the uh, nine that I just showed you, another successful Shopify store making 230K per month and they need digital marketing. So instead of having a semi-successful Shopify store, which takes a lot of time, energy, focus, and attention because you need to uh, understand a lot of business components to, because it's, it's, a, it's a very, you know, you, you, you need to uh, understand product development. You need to understand, you know, uh, online advertising. You need to start, uh, you need to understand branding, right? Logistics, et cetera, et cetera, right? Instead of doing that, you're just offering your service to the Shopify stores at scale. So for example, by offering, paid ads, maybe Facebook and Google ads, you charge the first um, Shopify store 2,600 per month, right? You can also charge performance driven incentives and, you know, all combined, it comes out to that. The second shop, uh, Shopify store, you charge $2,100, not a huge amount, but it's all profit. And I'll talk about that in just a bit. Um, so that's, the, the, you know, you, you offer uh, paid ads to the to this um, the Shopify store and you charge $2,100. And the third Shopify store, you go ahead and charge uh, $3,700 for uh, paid ad services. And so combined, you've got uh, $8,400 per month profit approximately, right? Um, which is technically a six figure business, right? In profit, profit, very important. And so I show you that because I just wanna, you know, I just wanted to spell the, um, you know, maybe a question that you, you're having. Okay, I, I understand that traditional SMEs you know, offering services to local businesses is, is definitely not the way to go. I understand that, Jaime, but if you're so bullish on e-commerce, why not just start uh, an e-commerce store? Well, that's why, right? Um, now, one of the great things about it, and I could talk about this for hours, and I've talked about this in, in previous videos, definitely check them out um, after this video, but one of the great things is once you build this e-commerce marketing agency, then you can go ahead and launch those Shopify stores. Then you can go ahead and launch your own brand if that's what you wish to do, because now you've learned all these skills, right? By working with high-end 
top uh, e-com brands, right? Uh, and so you've got a lot of money in the bank because you've offered, you've gone service fast, you've gone service-based business model agency fast, right? You've got a lot of money in the bank, you've got skills under your belt, and now you've got the confidence to be able to grow your own e-com store. So that's a bit about that. Um, now, why is this, you know, the, the new way of, of, uh, of doing a SMA, EMA, why is it so great? Four reasons. Number one, when it comes to crafting and reading your irresistible offer, it lends itself way better to that, right? You can craft a truly irresistible offer, an offer that is very hard to say no to. The return is very clear, right? The KPI we're optimizing for is purchase. The main KPI is purchase conversion value. So it's very clear how much money we've made them. And you can see here on the side, here's an example, right? Where, you know, clearly we can see uh, we, we've, we've, uh, uh, well, you cannot see the, the, the cost per purchase. Well, you can see the cost per purchase, but you cannot see the amount spent here. Um, it got cut out, but you can actually calculate it uh, if we just do a very simple uh, division. But we've got the website purchase conversion value at £40,000, and that comes out to a website purchase ROAS of uh, 4.78, right? And so the amount spent, if you do £40,000 uh, divided by 4.78, it'll come out to be 8.5K, roughly, right? And so you can clearly, my, my point is, you can clearly see how much money has been spent you can clearly see how much money has been generated and what that means in terms of the return on the ad spend on how much money we've spent on the ads. So the client sees this and they're like, keep going, right? Uh, let, let, let's keep uh, pouring money into it. So that's uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is you get to die on your own sword. If you get them incredible results, you're responsible. If you get them poor results, you are responsible. That gives you immense power. Don't let that scare you off. Make that your superpower, okay? Why? Because this is so much better than, you know, the example that I showed you, um, and the story that I told you about of clients saying, hey, your leads are weak. Even though you you know your leads are not weak, even though it's them that they cannot close the leads, who's going who's gonna to win that argument, right? And so it's better to put yourself in a position where there's, there's absolutely no question as to what your value is because numbers don't lie, right? And so you just show the numbers and you keep, uh, you keep uh, you know, the, you let the numbers do the talking and you just keep working, you just keep make, making the money and they're going to keep you around for a very long time if they are sane, okay? If they're a sane business owner. And the final thing is vital to success. So for most e-com businesses, their main source of traffic and customers will be online advertising. Not doing it welcomes at a very large cost to the growth of the business. They're also constantly seeing other e-com brands build empires off of social media marketing, right? They can see, I don't know, you know, Gymshark, Kylie Cosmetics, Drunk Elephant, right? All these massive brands who are building uh, e-com empires on the back of digital marketing, and they're just sitting on the sidelines, right? And they know what to do. They know how to get traffic. They know how to get eyeballs, right? Uh, and they know how to build a sustainable, predictable business. They just need the right person, right? And so it's a much easier sale. And one of the things that I truly believe is, uh, that I truly believe in is once you've got control over your value, you've got longevity, okay? If you can clearly show the value that you, you can offer, right? I showed you an example, then you've got longevity because as long as you're making the money, you, they, they're going to keep you around. Also, booking strategy sessions, booking, you know, uh, sales calls, uh, I call them strategy sessions, but booking sales calls, it can be done on autopilot, right? It can be automated. It can be scaled. And landing sales calls with potential clients is vital to this business, right? The more sales calls that you land, the more calls that you jump on, the more sales that you're going to generate, the more clients you're going to have, the, the more success uh, you're going to have with your agency. And so, there are no geographical limitations and e-commerce business owners are completely fine with that because that's how they operate their business too, right? Also, these uh, outreach methods, a few of them I'm going to talk about the, at the end of the of the video, they're much more effective because the common outreach methods that people use are way more effective on e-commerce uh, clients due to the nature of their business, which is online. For example, social media messaging, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, right? Emails, you know, loom videos, video audits. They land better because they spend their day online. And finally, sales can be automated. These platforms uh, lend themselves well uh, to automations because bits on a computer can be scaled. Zeros and ones can be scaled. If you're cold calling, if you're, if you're literally typing cold emails, right? You cannot scale that. You're always going to require to put in six to eight hours of work every single day, right? Because that's very ineffective. Uh, and that's why you also have to put a, put a lot of time into it, right? To actually sign clients, right? And so if you can scale this, if you can automate it, your life is going to be so much easier and you're going to be able to, to literally wake up. I've got, you know, myself, my students as well, waking up to meetings being booked pretty much on autopilot, right? Because you've got an automated sales fund. Number three, doing and closing strategy sessions. You can do that in a much more effective way. So um, you, you need to understand that these people, e-com uh, uh, founders, 
they've hired online, uh, they've hired people online in the past. So by now, the vast majority of e-com owners have hired someone online without ever meeting them. VAs, agencies, team members, most of their team will operate online too. So keep that in mind. Also, on the demo call, uh, or, or on whatever sales call, you know, on, on a sales call, we'll be able to walk them through a demo of our service with clear processes and results. So you can clearly show them the processes, the path of, you know, the, the plan attack and the results that are going to go along with it. And the final thing is obsessive client experience and satisfaction. So one of the great things about uh, e-commerce uh, agency is the fact that you can charge higher retainers. On average, e-com businesses tend to have healthier profit margins, around 30%, which allows them to invest more into revenue generating act activities like online advertising. This means more tangible growth for the client and your agency. Now I say 30%, but that, that is a very safe estimate. Um, most, most of my clients have 60, 70, even 85% profit margins. So keep that in mind. Um, but it allows them to invest way more into revenue gener uh, generating activities. And finally, full transparency. So business owners love seeing their dollars being put to work, uh, generating them more dollars. You know, who, who doesn't, right? And they can clearly see how much money we're making them with paid ads. Um, because when it comes to e-commerce, as I said, what we're optimizing for is purchase. We're literally getting someone to put out, you know, to get their card and pay for something. It's not a lead. It's not, a, you know, someone who's walking through, a, a, you know, a clinic or whatever it is, right? It's someone who's taking out their card and paying for a product. So, do you remember this, right? We talked about the unprecedented rate of growth in the e-commerce space. Well, let me add this to the equation to really convey the fact that not only is the e-com space um, in, 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 in very, very high need of e-com growth services, but also the fact that most uh, business owners are in desperate need of marketing. And so when you combine the two, you've got e-commerce marketing agency, and you've got a business model that has a lot of potential. So here's what you need to understand about most business owners' uh, current situation, which is pretty worrying, okay? Once you really, you know, I've, I've spoken to probably thousands at this point um, of business owners and I've, I've you know, I've, I've asked good questions about their, their uh, you know, pain points and, and their current situation. And it's become very apparent that these four things in one way or, or, or the other uh, apply to most business owners. So most business owners are product obsessed. Their business is their baby and they put all their energy and attention on their product. They think that people will just magically flock to it uh, simply because it's a great product. Also, not enough eyeballs. So when, uh, then they realize that not enough people are buying their product because not enough people know about it, right? So they thought that they would just create this product, amazing product, right? They would invest a lot of time into, you know, creating it, a lot of money into R&D, into research and development, and people would just flock to it, but that really doesn't happen, right? There's a lot of noise online. Uh, and for someone to really take notice of something, you must get in front of them with a very good message. Number three, it keeps them up, uh, up at night. Now they have all this inventory. They have invested greatly on, on research and development and into creating amazing products. They have a team they need to take care of, an amazing team, but they don't know where the next customer will come from. They just don't know how to sell this product, right? And so, um, they, you know, they're, they're not very happy, right? They're not very happy and they cannot sleep very tight at night. And the final thing is, you know, they, they know that they have to fix this, right? But they don't have the time or the expertise. They know they desperately need, uh, need marketing, but they simply don't have the time to try to master it. They're spending most of their time on low yield 20% activities, which are, you know, things like, um, you know, uh, customer support and managing team and, you know, jumping on, on team calls and, um, you know, producing new products uh, for what, right? You don't even have a best-selling product. Fix that false, right? And they, they know this, they, they understand that. So the final thing that I will say on this uh, to really illustrate the fact that, you know, this is a, this is something that they uh, desperately need is, is the fact that marketing is not a choice. It's an actual obligation. It is absolutely vital. It's a, it, it is mandatory if they are to grow uh, their e-com business, right? So the problem for most uh, business owners is the fact that when they started their business, they did not understand, you know, what their role actually was, right? they didn't understand that they were in a complete different business than they actually thought. And the reason why I say that is because look, the baker thinks he's in the baking business, right? The plumber in the plumbing business, the dentist in the dentistry business. The funny thing is they're not, okay? They're, they are in the business of selling those products and services, right? The dentist is in the business of selling his dentistry services, right? He's not in the dentistry business, okay? So they didn't really understand what business they were getting into. They didn't understand how, just how important uh, it was to actually sell, right? To market their service. And the next thing is number one priority, 
Getting their product out there and in front of as many people, as many qualified prospects with the right messaging is an absolutely vital task, okay? Everything else is secondary to that. Until they have this thing sorted, until they have a, break, a predictable uh, stream of customers, until they can pay a certain amount to acquire a customer profitably, they don't have a business and they know this, okay? And that's how desperately they need these type of services. Um, because look, a lot of e-com businesses, a lot of businesses in, in general, they might look good on the outside, but inside, they're just like that, okay? Uh, inside, most are desperate. Inside, they're, you know, they're, they're actually dying inside, okay? Even worse, traditional media just doesn't cut it anymore for most uh, for most uh, small medium sized business, right? So you might you might say, well, okay, cool, but why not just traditional media? Why online advertising? Here's why, right? Uh, this is a um, uh, a graph by Life Marketing, uh, basically conveying the the cost of acquiring a customer, uh, and you can see basically conveying the the cost per a uh, thousand impressions, so the CPM, and you can see that social media is by far the lowest. Okay, with direct mail and broadcast TV being some of the highest, 57 bucks. And the final thing that I'll, that I'll say on this, uh, before we move on to the, the really, really hard-hitting, juicy stuff, right? I've, I've preloaded and, uh, you know, hopefully you can, you can see that e-commerce is definitely the way to go, that, you know, business owners don't have this thing sorted, so they need this, this service desperately. And the final thing that I'll say on this is a few misconceptions that you may be having, right? You might be thinking, well, you know, wouldn't e-com brands already have online advertising? No, right? Most do not have a clue which is shocking, hopefully. Uh, you understand how shocking that is, right? You, you, how, do, how do these people not know how to market and sell their product? Like they're literally, you know, you've seen, right? They're in the business of selling products. Well, they think that they're in the business of selling X, Y, and Z. They think that they're in the business of selling lipsticks or they think they're in the business of selling shoes. They're not, right? But they haven't understood that yet. So it really shocked me too, right? When I started, uh, when I started my agency, I, I thought that everyone would surely, you know, have this sorted, right? And, and I have this limiting belief of, 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 you know, who am I to tell these people, right? Um, how, how would they consider me an expert? Well, they're great at other things, right? Business owners, founders, econ founders, they're great at creating a product. They're great at building a team, but they most of them don't have a, a single clue as to online advertising. Maybe they have a bit of clue as to, you know, traditional media, but they don't have a clue as to uh, how online advertising actually works. So it really shocked me, right? Uh, they're just product obsessed and have no idea how to sell on market. And so most are not even using online advertising. To illustrate that with facts, okay, before we move on, these are just some stats, okay? So this is just Facebook. We've got 30 million roughly, probably a bit more, um, Facebook pages. Only 1.5 million actually spend money on advertising. That's not a lot, right? If we look at other platforms, you thought that Facebook was little, right, in terms of percentages. Well, Facebook is actually the, you know, one of the biggest platforms. So we've got 27, uh, you know, 0.2 billion in ad revenue. But if you look at the other platforms, Snapchat, 2.5 billion, you know, less than 10% uh, when it comes to, you know, compared to Facebook. Pinterest, 1.3 billion. TikTok, 500 million. This, that's not, not, that number has probably grown at this point because TikTok has been growing like crazy, but it's still, you know, compared to Facebook, compared to Google, compared to those, those, you know, considered giants in the uh, on an advertising space, still a, a fraction, a fraction of the total market share of econ founders and, and business owners. So that is a bit about the current social landscape that uh, that are, surrounds us, right? And and why you know building an ecom agency is is by far the best thing you can do if you're looking to start a social media marketing agency. Now a bit about building a monopoly agency. What is a monopoly agency? So a few things to keep in mind, it's you know still extremely important to find a way to set ourselves apart. And that's because we don't want to compete. A lot of people who get into the space, and I, I've mentioned this already, who get into the space, they're looking to fit in, right? Maybe they look at, they see me putting out a YouTube content, right? And they, they, they go, okay, I'm going to copy this guy. I'm going to try to fit in. No, if you actually watch my videos, you, you, would, you would know that that's not the way to go, right? And the reason why we don't want to do that is because we don't want to compete. Not even with one agency, right? You don't want to compete with one agency, let alone a thousand other agencies. Make sense? Because competition is for losers. Competition is for losers. I'll let that sink in and I'll explain this in just a bit. Now, competition for losers is a, a concept inspired by uh, Pedro Thiel, a co-founder of PayPal. He's got a, a good book, a Zero to One. Definitely recommend you read that book if you've had a few years in the entrepreneurial journey. Um, I don't think it's a great book for beginners. Um, doesn't really have many actionable strategies, but essentially what he says in the, in, in the book is that a valuable company comes down to two things, right? It equals two things. Number one, you create value and then you add 
capturing some of the fraction of the value created. Right? So you create value and then you capture some of the value, the fraction of the value created. Now, he then goes on to say that there's two types of companies. We've got monopolies and we've got perfect competi uh, competition. Right? And so we've got two types of companies, but what are the differences between monopolies and a perfect competition uh, business? Here are the uh, the, uh, the differences, right? So we've got the monopolies um, are basically, these are businesses that are more stable. They are long-term businesses. They have very little competition and they have more capital. They're making more money. Perfect, uh, perfect competition, however, uh, they don't seem too happy uh, as you can see. They sell an identical product. They cannot control the market price of their product or their service. They have a relatively small share, a market share. Their buyers know exactly the product being sold and the price other firms, other agencies, other you know, uh, service providers are charging, right? And what happens is they don't make a lot of money. And so the funny thing is most agencies, most people starting a social media marketing agency, they are these people, right? They are perfect competition businesses. They sell the identical thing. They sell Facebook ads, Google ads, whatever it is, right? They cannot control the market price of their service because they have absolutely no differentiation strategy. As a result, they don't um, really conquer a, a big chunk of the, mar uh, the market share. Mo in most cases, clients know how much they should be paying um, for Facebook ads or Google ads because they don't have an actual you know, offer. Um, and as a result, they don't make a lot of money, uh, which definitely applies for most people. So monopolies, right? If you look at, you know, what are some examples of monopolies? So Google, for example, is a monopoly, 66. And, and the reason why that is, uh, although you know, technically it would not be described as a monopoly. Otherwise it would have their, you know, the, the government on their ass. And I'll explain, you know, why, you know, why they're able to uh, get away with it. But uh, uh, Google, for example, has a 66% of the market share of the search industry. That is a big chunk. Okay. If you look at Amazon, they have a 49% market share of e-commerce. If you look at Microsoft, they have an 87.5% market share of office suites. Now, what are some, you know, what are some examples of the, of uh, perfect competition? Number one, hospitality industry, right? You've got, you know, hundreds, thousands of, um, you know, hotel brands. And look, when, when you're when you're traveling to a, uh, a city, right? Um, when you're traveling abroad, most people are not very romantic and and passionate about this specific, um, you know, hotel chain that they're going to, right? They just like the hotel for whatever reason, right? And, and they just go to that hotel, maybe location, maybe, you know, um, I don't know, the, you know, the, the way the, the, the hotel looks, but it's not really because of the, the hotel uh, chain. Also the agriculture uh, industry, right? So all these brands that you can see here, another example. Uh, and as well as the uh, airline industry, most people are not very loyal, uh, loyal to, uh, to their, um, most people are not very loyal to their airline. So how do they get away with it? I'll explain how in just a bit, I'll explain how this actually applies um, for the e-com agency model and why it's incredibly important to be not the, the perfect competition type of business, but the monopoly uh, business. Well, the reason why they get away with it is because monopolies pretend to have lots of competition. They don't want the government to regulate them, so they won't call themselves a monopoly. For example, Google won't uh, describe themselves as, as a search engine anymore. They'll say they're competing with Apple on TVs and smartphones, right? And Amazon on cloud services. Makes sense? So they don't describe themselves as the one thing that they've conquered and they're uh, actually a monopoly, but they'll describe themselves um, yeah, as the one thing that they're not really, uh, you know, great at um, and, and you know, essentially argue that they're competing with uh, other big companies. However, non-monopolies pretend to have no competition, so they're tempted to lie because they may not make any money otherwise. They'll say they're doing something unique that is less competitive than it looks in an attempt to separate themselves from the rest of the herd. It may seem these two types of companies are very similar. You know, the airline, uh, the, the airplane industry is bigger than Surge, for example, but they're widely different. And so the funny thing is um, a lot of social media marketing agencies, right? They'll say they, you know, they're unique because they're, un you know, they're doing X, Y, and Z, right? They're actually not, and, and they're competing with um, thousands and thousands of other agencies because they haven't set themselves apart. So how does this apply to EMA? Now, here's most people, right? Um, maybe, you know, and, and this is not obviously going to be you if you stay till the end of the video, but most people hear about this e-com space, right? And they're like, oh, cool, I'm going to do that. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I can clearly see that local business is not the way to go, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to become an e-com agency not so fast all right because uh, what happens is let's just imagine you know these people on um, yellow suits uh on yellow uh, uh outfits they, they're looking pretty drippy uh let's just imagine that they're they're gonna try to start a broad e-com agency now what happens is you've got someone like 
Ecom, which is my agency, right? Uh, a broad e-commerce agency. And so these two guys, these two beginners, right? Uh, looking to get started with their agency, go ahead and they try to, you know, they, they, uh, they try to compete with this broad e com agencies who are already maybe in the market and, and have been in the market for a number of years, right? And what happens? Well, RIP, John Lauren, uh, the e com agency, obviously, uh, you know, completely outcompetes uh, John and Lauren because they have more experience. They've been around for longer. And John and Lauren, is they're trying to compete with these people at the one thing that they're good at, right? And so that's not a, a really good strategy. And this is the deadly mistake most people make, right? When they start a social media marketing agency, which is what this whole presentation is all about, right? When they start a, a social media marketing agency, they try to go after a big market from the get-go, right? And it's always funny because, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they, they talk about like, oh, but I'm scared of saturation and I'm, I'm scared of competition. Um, you know, and I think there's a lot of saturation. Yet they do the one thing that puts them in the position to have, you know, to, to experience saturation uh, saturation at first hand and, and to 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 really uh, be outcompeted by other agencies, okay? So not 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 the great uh, you know not, not the greatest strategy. So they see the advantage of e-commerce and they dive straight into the deep end. There you deal with a number of competitors, like for example my agency who's been around for longer. So that way you're competing with uh, you're competing with established agencies. These agencies have more authority, social proof, experience, expertise, case studies than you. Right? It's impossible to beat them at their game. You don't want to be the third, the fourth, the tenth, or the twentieth in a space. These are, you know, always these people are unhappy, unsuccessful agency owners that are alike uh, because they fail to escape the essential sameness in competition. And this failure to escape competition leads to an epidemic of what I call me too agencies, agencies offering the same service in the same niche competing for the same clients. Look, if you're watching this presentation, do not be a me too agency. Okay. That's, that's reserved for people that have watched other, you know, how to start a social media marketing agency videos. Okay, we're not going to do that. We're not going to be uh, another typical social media marketing agency offering the same type of service, offering, you know, to, to uh, a different niche in the local business space or e-commerce. We're not going to do that, right? We're going to be very, very strategic about the um, specific, you know, space within e-commerce that we go into, right? So that we don't have competition and we can conquer that space. So how can we skin, uh, how how can we uh, escape competition and beat these other agencies? And here I'm kind of you know uh, I'm doing myself dirty because I'm literally giving you a blueprint on how you can actually beat you know agencies like mine, for example, that are big in the ecom space. David versus Goliath. You want to use this strategy. You want to use uh, this mindset going into it. So here's a comprehensive guide on beating the competition. The first thing is you want to understand the enemy. So. Typically, we've got two types of agencies. When approaching premium e-com brands, okay, which are the clients that we are going to be signing, I'm going to be showing you in just a bit how to sign these clients. Okay, there are two types of agencies we're going up against. Number one, the do-it-all agencies and the broad e-com agencies. So the do-it-all agencies are the the agencies that are doing pretty much every single niche right uh, in the world. Um, they're doing restaurants, they're doing clinics, they're doing uh, dentists, but they're also doing e-com brands, right? Uh, they're doing everything. And you've also got on the flip side, you've got e-com agencies, right? They're doing, you know, vegan brands and, you know, fashion brands and beauty brands and tech brands, right? They're using, you know, they're they're basically helping um, all types of e-com brands uh, grow, right? So these are the two types of agencies that you're going up against and understand the enemy actually helps you visualize who you're going up against, right? Um, and and by understanding that, then you can, you, you know what their strengths and weaknesses are and you know how you can beat them. So the strengths are the fact that They've got more authority, they've got a track record, they've got testimonials and results, and they've got more experience and expertise. But the weakness is they don't have a specific focus on a sub-niche. They're, they're uh, encompassing uh, big markets, which is a double-edged sword, because they're not, you know, and, and, and you'll see this, why, why this is actually a weakness, but since they're not in one specific space, right, they're not the go-to agency in that space. They could be the go-to agency because they have all those trends that I just talked about, but if another agency that you know specializes in that space and does only that one uh, space and knows all about that one space, then they're going to get beat, right? They're going to get beaten by this other agency. And the second thing is they're bloated and big. It's hard to personalize to different sub niches, even if they wanted to, right? So even if they wanted to do uh, what I just talked about, even if they wanted to appeal to just one specific segment of people, right? Maybe vegan brands for a month, right? It would be almost impossible because they would have to, you know. Uh, pivot everything, right? It, and, and you want to imagine these 
uh, two types of agencies as this big, big elephants that are just clunky um, and, and, and just don't really know how to, you know, be agile and, and move very quickly. The second thing we want to do is we want to understand where you're currently at, right? So you right now watching this video, you want to understand that persona. You want to understand who, you know, what your strengths are and your weaknesses are. So a bit about the weaknesses, what you don't have, you don't have experience. In most cases, you don't have results or testimonials and typically you don't have a track record. Maybe it, this does not, you know, it doesn't apply to you, um, but you know, I'm guessing most people watching this video, that's the, that's the case, right? What you do have is you have the right guidance, right? Um, if you're watching this video, you have a, a really good start. You have work ethic and hunger. You have the ability to pivot easily uh, and understanding who your competitors would be down the broad econ path, right? So you understand who those competitors would be down the broad econ path. The other thing is we want to understand the factor of 10 rules. So you want to understand that you don't need to be the first to the e-com space to be successful. You simply need to offer, uh, you simply need your offer to be 10, 10x better than the competition. Okay. For example, if you look at Microsoft, you know, was the last uh, operating uh, e uh, system for many decades. Google was the last search engine. Facebook will be valuable. Okay. Their value will be determined by not, you know, who was first to market, right? By, but uh, instead by uh, the longevity. Right? So if it turns out to be the last social uh, media network, uh, Facebook will be the most valuable social media network. Okay? So my point is, you need to be, you know, we now understand who the enemy is, right? We understand who you, you know, what you do have and what you don't have. And we also understand what we need to do to actually beat our competition. And so we need to level the playing field given our and their strengths and weaknesses, right? So we, we understand what those are. And so, and we also understand that we need to offer something that is 10x better than them. So we don't compete with them and they cannot compete with us. So how do we actually do that? How do we actually do that, right? So we understand what we need to do, but how do we actually do that? We need to narrow down into a specific sub niche within the e-com space. And this is what most people don't actually do, okay? But it is absolutely vital that you do this. What you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and picture e-commerce, right? And then you wanna break it down into its um, you know, subsequent, uh, you wanna break it down into uh, its uh, sub niches, right? A great way of doing this, if, if you go on any big e-commerce uh, conglomerate um, and, and, and search uh, platform, like for example, Amazon, you will see a bunch of categories, right? You will see a bunch of uh, sub-niches. These are the sub-niches that I'm referring to, right? So these are some examples of product-based sub-niches. We've got tech, apparel and fashion, fitness, health and wellness, home, pets, beauty, food and beverage, baby. The list goes on and on and on, okay? So it's incredibly vital that you pick one. And the reason why you want to pick one is because as we spoke about, right? What you don't want to do is you don't want to compete in, your, in, a, in a broad e-com space. You don't want to compete for the same clients that these other broad e-com agencies or these other adult agencies are competing for. We want to laser focus in one single sub niche. Why? So that you have the advantage of being one, uh, the, the agency that laser focuses in one single sub niche. And when you have that, uh, even though you are just getting started, even though you're a beginner, you still have a massive advantage, okay? Because people love, you know, the, 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 there's this thing called um, in-group, out-group bias, right? People resonate with people that share similar interests, similar characteristics, and similar uh, knowledge, right? And so if you focus just on the baby sub niche, right? And you're approaching baby brands, right? And this baby brand is getting approached by a broad e-com agency, a total agency, and a baby specific uh, sub niche e-com agency, they're gonna go for your brand, right? Um, obviously, if you have the right processes and, and you know uh, all that stuff that, that we'll, we'll talk about in just a bit, but uh, it's incredibly important that you do this. Otherwise, uh, it's gonna be very, very hard um, to actually get traction at the start. Why? Because you're competing with people that have a lot more strengths than you do, okay? So hopefully uh, you're, you're, uh, you're staying with me. Uh, if you're enjoying this, and you haven't uh, hit the, the, the like button, I'd really appreciate it if you do that. It helps out with the algorithm, the whole channel, and I'd really appreciate it. So go ahead and do that right now. And we'll take a bit of a break <sighs> before we get straight into the uh, next section, which is picking a hybrid e-com service. So let's just do a bit of a recap, right? We've talked about what has changed, right? So we've talked about the current social landscape. We've also talked about the new way of doing things, right? We've talked about how the traditional SME model, forget about that, right? It's all about the e-com space now. But, okay, cool. We understand that the e-com space is the way to go, right? We understand that also creating an e-com brand, not so bueno, right, at the start. Um, but why is it, you know, how do we compete with these other big agencies that have already established um, 
you know, name in, in the e com space, well, we do that by laser focusing into the sub niche, um, into a specific sub niche. Now we're going to talk about even uh, another way to even add another massive um, strength to your arsenal so that it makes signing clients and, and growing your agency so much easier. And that is picking a hybrid e com service. So, a few things you want to um, you know, keep in mind, right? Let's discuss the difference between the two types of uh, services you can pick. So you can pick a social return or a revenue driven service. Now the social return service, the goal here is they're optimized to increase brand credibility, lift brand image, create communities um, and drive organic traffic. The return is social. For example, an increase in views, followers, engagement, right? What they lack, however, is a clear monetary return. There's no way to attribute revenue growth and make it tangible. So in times of crisis, what happens is business owners, they look at their balance sheet, right? And they keep the things that are making them money, but cut the things that are not, right? Since it's harder to convey the value of social return services, these services are not bulletproof, okay? However, you know, for example, social media management, Instagram, Instagram growth, TikTok growth, video editing, customer support, community manager, podcast creation and growth, filmmaking and videography, creative, you know, for example, creating, uh, you know, creating uh, slideshows, social media content, etc. These have a return, right? And I'm going to say, you know, 100% having more followers, having a, a, a more engaged community is going to lead to more dollars uh, down the line. But right now, what are the, what was the return? And, and also, how tangible is it? How can I see the dollars be made, right? With social return, like you can see patterns, right? But you cannot see, you know, we put this much in and we, we made the, this back. However, with revenue driven services, the goal is to make clients a return on their adverti uh, advertising spend. We've talked about this, right? It's got an impact on sales, revenue, profit, and business growth. It takes more skill, sure. Um, so the barrier to entry actually means there's, you know, the higher barrier to entry actually means there's more differentiation. A lot of people are scared of a higher, a higher uh, barrier to entry. I absolutely love it. And you should too, right? Because if you just put in a bit of effort, okay, if you just commit, which you should, I mean, and, and people who watch my channel, uh, you know, people commit, you know, they, these people commit, right? They go full in. Um, they, they're they relentless about, about the, you know, building a business. They're not just in it for uh, the quick cash or, or a little gimmick, right? Um, anyways, my point is, it's great for us since we take things seriously and we have an expert team. Also sustainable. So as long as you're making your clients a profit, no sane business owner will cut you off. Next, higher switching costs. Okay, since, since clients understand there's a science and art to business growth and making money, they often become hooked on our service. We're seen as kind of like wizards almost, right? Uh, we are modern day alchemists and they know very few people will be able to do what we're doing. We're, we are not uh, perfectly competitive, right? So we're, we've escaped perfect competition because our offer is so rare and so tangible at the same time, right? That they see us as these wizards, right? That, that are making their business growth and uh, that they're, uh, they're making their business grow and it's not very easy to come by those people. And the final thing is we can charge based on performance. Since there's a clear return on the investment, we can charge according to performance. So you can clearly see, hopefully, uh, at this point, that uh, it's you know the, the route to take is re definitely uh, revenue-driven services. So if you were thinking of these, probably not the best idea, right? You can take it, you can leave it, but probably not the best idea because these are social return services. So we want to do revenue-driven services. Now, before we talk about what those look like, a few pitfalls to watch out for. But, you know, I, I didn't even know this was coming. Uh, if you're enjoying this so far, right, and you haven't already, go ahead and like if you're enjoying the training so far. Uh, go ahead and make that gray looking, uh, gray, ugly looking uh, like button turn blue. But with that being said, I'll wait, I'll wait for you to do that. And with that being said, uh, let's go back into the, the training. A few pitfalls to watch out for. So the first one is do not marry your service. So we can see here these... Uh, these people have made a mistake because uh, we can see this this woman has married Snapchat and uh, this guy has married Facebook and they're probably going to have a, a a very bad marriage and probably it's going to end in, in divorce because that's just not the way you want to do things, okay? Do not marry your service. So what I mean by this, uh, first, of, uh, you know, first things first is the same way that we don't pick a niche based on passion, we don't want to pick a platform uh, because we like it. We are not romantic about the platform that we pick, okay? We just see, we audit, and see what platforms will generate the highest return for our clients, okay? And that is what we base our decision on. It's not because we like Facebook ads. We're not a Facebook ads agency. We're not a Google ads agency. That's not our, our identity, right? We are in the business of e-com growth, of growing our clients' businesses. So it's all about generating the highest return possible for them. And look, if Facebook ads was to die in the next month, I wouldn't be too faced by that, right? Even though I would say most of our, you know, most of our clients, I would say like, you know, 70% of, of our time is spent on Facebook and Instagram ads. 
I wouldn't be too faced about that, right? Because we can just pivot very quickly and uh, we can do that in a very, very effective manner. So, uh, and that's the next point, right? We're able to pivot very quickly. And if, you know, for whatever reason, uh, next month, you know, Facebook ads, which could be my flagship service right now, is not the place where we can generate the highest return for our clients, we'll just pivot, right? We'll pivot to the next thing. We'll pivot to TikTok ads. We'll pivot, you know, we'll pivot, we'll go harder on Google ads, right? Um, it's just all about the one thing that's going to gener generate them the highest return possible. For example, you know, here, here's a really, you know, real life example, um, the Google Perch, right? So I want you to, uh, to imagine this and, and this actually happened. So it's not just a made up story. So John starts advertising on Google ads. He starts with a thousand dollars and starts seeing uh, sales roll in. Things are going great, right? He's, he's very excited. Um, you know, things are finally clicking. He hires more people to deal with the influx of new sales and increase their ad spend. He's really happy they found an advertising channel that works to scale their business. Suddenly, without warning, Google changes the landscape of their ad platform. This actually happened, right? Friday, February 2016, Google decided to remove sidebar uh, ads on search results. And, you know, they look like that. Um, you can see it on the, on the picture. There's an, a big arrow pointing at it. Those were sidebar ads and overnight they were gone, okay? So businesses who relied purely on Google ads to get traffic and sales were hurt badly. Google, uh, Google actually wiped out 70% of the ad real estate, making remaining spots much more competitive and obviously much more expensive. So John has to fire staff and scramble for a new way to get customers. And the reason why this happened to John is because he was romantic about Google ads. He was like, you know, he, he saw it as the one thing that was gonna help him uh, grow his business. And when you rely too heavily on one thing, and when you're romantic about one thing, you can get your heart broken. And uh, that's what happened here, right? Uh, so that is the Google perch. What can we learn, right? Number one, do not uh, depend on one single channel. You never want uh, your business or your client's life blood of their business to rely purely on one channel. Your business should be able to operate regardless of Zuckerberg, Larry Page, and others. Next, platforms come and go, okay? Recently, for example, you guys might, might have uh, heard of it. I made a video on my channel. It was the iOS 14 update, impacting Facebook ads negatively. We have, we have, honestly, we haven't seen much of a, a difference, uh, much of an impact uh, at the agency, but the key is to stay agile and to never marry one single, uh, single service, but to keep a cool head when it comes to switching over to other platforms. So now you know what to watch out for when, when it comes to picking your service. Here are three keys to remember when picking your service. And here are the three commandments you don't want to violate. Okay, do not violate any of these commandments. Number one is the commandment of location. We don't want the service to tie us down to a location. We must be able to do it remotely from anywhere in the world. Otherwise, it will eat up um, our financial freedom and ability to scale past the human flesh. For example, video creation. If you are offering video creation and you're looking to start a video creation agency, Look, it, it could still be an e-com agency, right? You know, helping e-com brands with the video creation, but you're going to violate that commandment of location because you have to actually be there uh, shooting the content for the client, okay? You also don't want to uh, violate the commandment of time. So results shouldn't be immediate, but they should also not take months, okay? There, there should be a fast feedback loop. For example, SEO takes quite a bit of time, right? For, uh, for you to see the results. Not, not a great, you know, flagship front-end offer. Uh, also, website building, not the greatest choice because, again, it violates the, the, the commandment of time. Also, there should be no correlation between our time and our value. And I'll speak about this in just a bit. Incredibly, incredibly vital. Okay. Do not trade time for money. Okay. Um, we want to make, you know, we want to make sure that we pick a service where th there's no correlation, right, between the time we spend and the value that we generate. I should be asymmetric. And the final thing is commandment of skill. So this service should be as close to replicable as possible and someone else should be uh, able to do it. It should also have a maximum capacity of more than seven clients. So I really want you to remember the second commandment. However, uh, we're not time slaves, okay? Do not trade your time for money. That is the way you lose. Um, a lot of freelancers do this, it's, you know, especially the, the, the ones that are paid by the hour. We don't want to do that, okay? So keep that in mind. So with that being said, okay, we talked about uh, I've preluded and I'm a big fan, as you guys can see, of preluding because I, look, I, 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 sure, I could just tell you like, hey, these are the services. These are, you know, the, the niches, but that would really, you know, it wouldn't help you, right? Um, you want to understand why we're doing what we're doing uh, on top of obviously how to actually do it, uh, not just the what, right? Because the what doesn't actually empower you, okay? The what, you go implement it, you're like, oh, I know this, right? Then you go implement it and you're like, uh, this is a missing piece of the puzzle, right? Why? Because you haven't understood why we're doing what we're doing, right? So it's really important to understand why we're doing what we're doing. If you've jumped to this part, then it probably tells me a bit about uh, how your uh, SME journey is going to go. So here are your service options. Now, before I get into it, what is a sales funnel, right? Maybe uh, you know this, maybe you don't, but a sales funnel 
very important and, and the reason and you see that why, why it's quite important but it's also one of what it is is the journey we take a prospect who's never heard about our product or service towards the purchase of this product and service so we've got you know different stages we've got for example awareness we've got consideration we've got preference purchase and loyalty at the very very end so how does this apply to the service okay. the way i'm going to explain the service for an e-com agency is by breaking down the uh Typical e-com funnel, right? This is the way that I've broken it down. Um, and this is the way that I see an e-commerce funnel. Basically, what I mean by this is these are all the things that are required to get someone to go from awareness to that loyalty and purchase stage. So it all starts with pay traffic and the ad content, right? So we need a picture or a video, right? And we need to uh, pair it with a platform, right? So we put in front of people an ad and, and we actually, you know, select the, the, the people that we want to get in front of, right? So that is the combination uh, that we need to to actually get started, right? <clears throat> so so that is the combination that we need to create awareness, and we, and that is the combination that is going to generate that top of the funnel people. Make sense? Now these people we're going to drive to a landing page, right? So we're going uh, we're going to drive to a landing page. Um, on that landing page, obviously we want them to buy something, right? We're going to have an offer, which is the next thing on the funnel. Um, so on that landing page, we're going to have an offer. Now, when they see the offer, they can do a bunch of things, right? And that, that's what I call the website journey. Uh, journey, right? They can go ahead and add to cart and they can go through the checkout process for example they can go ahead and you know uh, look around the website and and go on the about us section or whatever it is right uh, but that is the website journey and then after that website journey uh, we're looking to get that purchase okay now as you can see right below we've got direct marketing and what that is is basically the people that don't convert right we've got sms email marketing chatbot right um basically getting in front of these people uh leading them to that purchase so the reason why I say this is because we can actually break down the funnel into its subsequent services. Okay? So for example, pay traffic, we can break it down into Facebook ads, Google ads, Snapchat ads, TikTok ads, Pinterest ads, right? Ad content, we can actually break it down into a viral e-com ad creation. Okay? Now landing page, we can actually create the landing page for e-com brands, right? When it comes to the offer, we can actually copyright. So we can do copywriting for that offer to make sure that our you know clients have an incredible offer on that landing page that is pretty much you know a very very um very um a hard to say no to conversion rate optimization okay so that website journey is it optimized right or are people getting lost on the website leading them to not purchase right so we can offer that as a service okay and finally with direct marketing email marketing sms marketing messenger chatbots right we can offer uh, all those services as direct marketing services so we've turned the funnel into what i call the e-com service funnel pretty cool stuff so a bit about these services, um, you know, one by one. What it is running to, uh, so paid ads, for example. What it is uh, running targeted ads to cold and retargeting audiences and driving this traffic to the client's website to convert it into purchases. We are responsible for three areas: targeting, creatives, although we use the ones we're provided with, and ad copy. Two routes. So you can either you know you can either go down the more established route, Facebook and Google Ads. You can pick that, or with the newer platforms, you know, TikTok, Snapchat, or Pinterest. Right? You want to pick, um, you know, one of the two routes. Um, don't pick both, uh, just pick one or, or, or the other um, simply because it's different value offerings, right? Um, for example, the you know the, the, the more established route, it's more established, so people already know the value, right? Um, Facebook, ads, uh, Facebook and Google Ads, like e-com brands already know that this is a proven service, right? Uh, a lot of e-com brands have already had success with these services, whereas the newer platforms, they don't have that credibility uh, as much as Facebook, but they do have that new component, right? Where not as many people may be doing that, okay? We're not really worried about that competition element because by now you should pick the sub niche. You know, uh, you you also have an irresistible offer. Uh, you're building a monopoly agency, so that's not something that really worries us. But sometimes those newer platforms can get more attention, especially from the brands that maybe have um, Facebook and Google Ads implemented, or so they think, right? Um, so that, those are the two routes. The pro is the start of the funnel, so it's arguably the most vital piece of the puzzle. Right? Without paid ads, without traffic, you know, th there's no need for. Uh, you know, conversion rate optimization or having a really good copy written offer. Uh, also, it can be scaled quite easily without a large time investment from your side. And most prospects think that their problem is a traffic problem. Thinking that they actually only have a traffic problem is not true, um, but it makes it easier to sell, sell the service. And the final thing is the con. So probably not, you know, these are probably, uh, paid ads is probably the most competitive um, and it's not as effective if one doesn't have a 360 approach to e-com growth. And what I mean by that is that you know, while most people only, th if they're doing Facebook ads, they only think of e-com growth through a Facebook ads lens. They think, well, Facebook ads is the one thing that's going to help you grow. 
Um, that's not necessarily true, right? Because uh, it's very important that we have a 3.6 approach. Sure, we're not offering landing page creation or we're not offering conversion rate optimization, but we know uh, that these things exist. We know that these things are important to make sure that the paid traffic, the top of the funnel, actually uh, yields the best results possible. So that's what I mean by that, but definitely a really good option. Next thing is viral e-com ad creation. So what it is, creating high converting viral ads for e-com brands uh, to run them to cold audiences. Okay, I'm sure you've seen this, um, the typical video ads uh, where, you know, it basically uh, showcases the product. It has um, basically a bunch of, um, you know, a bunch of uh, different, uh, it's kind of like a carousel video, right? Where with a bunch of different scenes um, showcasing the benefits and the features of the product and, and the product in use in most cases. So the pro, uh, the tangible return, a 1% higher click-through rate on an ad could mean extra thousands uh, of visit, you know, of website visitors daily, which could mean hundreds of extra new customers. So there's a clear return, right? Uh, and with all the services, there's a clear return. And finally, there's a winning formula. So there's a, rep a replicable and winning process. The con is struggles for longevity. So once the client has a, a few winning ads, there's not a very predictable turnaround rate. And the final thing is overlap with agency paid traffic services. So many agencies already offer to do the creative portion on top of the paid traffic uh, service uh, side, right? So it's, 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 a, it's a good uh, service. Um, especially if you if you like that creative component and maybe you have a bit of um, a video editing um, experience uh, under under the belt. But um, yeah, that, that's a viral e commerce creation. Next is landing page creation. So we've talked about this, obviously you saw on the uh, e-com funnel. What it is, is high, creating a high converting landing page, usually on Shopify. So the pro, again, a tangible return, a 1% higher conversion rate could mean thousands of new customers on a daily basis. And winning formula, there's a replicable and winning process. The con, struggles with longevity, typically one of a unique projects. Slow turnaround, so it takes a long time to see the results and low capacity so when you have you know a bunch you know a client's signed on for landing page creation it's quite a time time intensive um so through the, you know three to four clients can already take up a lot of our team uh, members time uh next is copywriting so writing words on landing page that actually sell so pro tangible return a one percent higher conversion rate i mean thousands of new customers right uh, but a con higher barrier to entry so you can outsource the service the, uh, the service but typically a service you exhibit with your outreach and a skill that is not learned overnight and also there's overlap with other agency services. So oftentimes the website agency will also be doing the copyright. Next is direct marketing. So email marketing, SMS marketing, and chatbots. What it is, basically communicating with members of the public who've shown an intent to buy from you through direct communication like email, SMS, or messenger chat. The pro, there's a tangible return. So there's a clear dollar sign attached to the service. Also it's pure profit. So it doesn't require any ad spend. It's a matter of using their current assets more effectively. This means that you can also often work on pure commission and still make a lot of money. And it's fairly untapped. You know, I would say most businesses are leaving so much money on the table by not doing so that it's very untapped. And um, it's definitely something that, you know, I would say, especially for e-com uh, businesses, like, you know, 85% are probably not doing uh, email marketing right. So that's that. And the con, it's a big upfront time investment, typically writing the copy for the emails. It's time intensive, but once it's done, it's done, right? So it's not a huge con, but that is direct marketing. Definitely a, a good option as well. And conversion rate optimization is the, the final service. Uh, so what it is, is a system for increasing the percentage of visitors to a, a website that converting to customers or more generally take a desired action. So the pro uh, has got a tangible return. Increasing the conversion rate on a website could mean thousands of extra dollars. Also it's pure profit. So it doesn't require any ad spend. It's just making more out of the traffic they're already paying for. The con, it does struggle for longevity because you know typically better suited for a one-off consulting agreement. Once you've optimize their website, there's very little you can actually do for, you know, 10, 14, you know, 18, 24 months, right? Um, it's, it's usually a longer uh, time span. Uh, so those are the e-com services that I recommend you pick. And you've seen that they all stem through, that they all stem from a very clearly defined uh, e-com funnel. Now, my recommendation, well, my recommendation is either paid ads or email marketing, especially if you don't have an affinity for these other services that I've already spoken about. Now, if you have experience, if you have an affinity, maybe a bit of a passion, maybe you've done it in the past, then definitely consider it, right? Um, you know, knowledge is, is power. And so now you have all these uh, all these options, all, you know, you, you're aware of all the options that are available to you. So that is that for these services. Um, little recap, <clears throat> but before I do the recap, if you haven't liked the video, go ahead and make that ugly looking uh, green li uh, like button uh, turn blue only if you are liking the video, okay? Uh, only do that uh, if you're liking the video. But if you've gotten to this point of the video, you probably do because you probably are enjoying it because uh, we've covered quite a lot, okay? A little recap, we've covered what has changed, 
we've also covered um, the difference between the traditional SMA and the new way of doing things. Uh, we know what we're doing. We know that e-com is, is definitely the way to go. And we also know how to build a monopoly agency and the importance of doing that if we actually don't want to compete and we want to thrive as an agency. We've also gone ahead and picked our uh, uh, hybrid e-com service, right? So you should have already be aware of the different services you can offer. And you've, you should have already at least started thinking about uh, the service that you can actually offer uh, to these uh, brands. Now we're going to talk about building a team. Why are we building a team now? I will answer that in a uh, in, in just a second. But, for, but you know, the, the first thing that you want to uh, understand is the mastery curve. So you need to understand that to master paid ads, right, or direct marketing, email marketing, uh, which are just some of the services that I've talked about, but, you know, definitely um, some of the services you can consider, right? To master any of these uh, services is not sufficient to learn about it. You must get your hands dirty to become an expert. Not only does it take uh, does it then take years, but you need clients for this, so you can um, so you run into this chicken and egg problem, right? Where you need to get experience, but you only get experience with clients, but you need clients to get that experience, and so you don't want to do that, right? Uh, unless you want to be at it for five years until you sign that first client. Mastering direct marketing, you know, this also applies because even marketing, sure, it can, it itself can be mastered in a few months, but copywriting is more of an iterative process, right? So the the main thing is. Waiting to master the service you offer is the most detrimental thing you can do to your success as, as an agency owner, right? And so I see so many agency owners, they go, you know, the, the first uh, instinct is, okay, I'm going to master Facebook ads, right? I'm going to master this high income skill, right? Uh, that's not the high income skill. The high income skill is, you know, uh, the sales, the marketing side of things, they're building an incredible team, building systems, right? But mastering that service is not the high income skill, right? It's not what you should be doing at first. And I'll explain how we do that and why we do that. but how we do that is using the value arbitrage method. So here's a little uh, diagram of the 12 archetypes. Um, hope I'm pronouncing that right, but essentially these are uh, 12 different kind of like personality traits, right? Um, if you were to call it like that. Uh, but essentially you can see here, my, my point with this is um, you can see here that different people are cut off for different things, right? And so uh, there's people that wanna provide structure in life, right? So we've got caregivers, rulers, artists, right? There's people that are more of a, on a spiritual journey, right? So uh, we've got the innocent, we've got the sage, we've got the explorer. Uh, there's people that want to leave a mark. I think entrepreneurs, us, uh, we probably fall into that category. We've got the outlaw, we've got the magician, we've got the hero, okay, who's chasing mastery. Magician is chasing power. Um, and there's also the people that want to connect to others. You know, we've got the um, the lover, we've got the jester, we've got the uh, everyman, right? Uh, belonging, pleasure, intimacy. Now, I think everyone has a bit of a bit of everything, right? But there's always there's always a um, an element, a type of um, you know, uh, 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 an element of our correct of our personality that always shines through. The reason why I mention this is because you need to understand that different people are cut out for different roles in the tribe. Okay, for example, as I said, entrepreneurs we tend to uh, uh, fall under the leave a mark uh, sort of things, right? So you want to understand nature to achieve mastery of a craft. We embrace our strengths and focus our attention, right? The shoemaker. Masters, shoemaking. The baker, bakery, right? The advertiser, media buying. It's it's how we move forward as a, as a civilization. And so it's only when I see people try to master so many things, right? That they don't move forward in life, right? Because it's just so ineffective to do that. So do not go against nature. When you try to master a handful of things, do everything yourself and not get help from other experts in their craft, instead of focusing on a core few things, you experience a lot of friction from nature and the universe, okay? So do not do that. We want to tap into the value arbitrage um, uh, um, value arbitrage method. Leave the ego at the door. That is the door that I'm pointing at. Uh, leave the ego at the door and understand that if we are, if we are to move forward, we must work with others who are experts in uh, a certain fields and leverage their skills. Squan society has us believe the opposite, but this is very important a realization that most people don't make. Okay, so we need to leverage other people's skills. A good example is Elon Musk, right? How does he accomplish all this stuff? I'm not, you know, smart, you know, the guy's a genius, right? But he also has an incredible team. He's built an incredible culture and people love working for him, right? And so he's got the smartest engineers um, and that's how he, you know, accomplishes all this stuff, right? He's not, you know, the, the, the you know, in part he is, right? But he's, he's not the brains behind um, Tesla, right? The actual, you know, uh, car, right? Or, or the rocket, right? His engineers are, but he leverages other people's um, uh, skills and abilities to build incredible companies. So that is what we want to do, right? We want to use the value arbitrage method. And what you want to do, okay, is you want to hire the people to deliver the service, right? So 
if you are offering, let's just say paid ads, right? And you've, you're offering TikTok ads, you hire a TikTok ad specialist as a contractor. It's a virtual contractor, right? You pay him part of the fee from the client and they are, they are part of your team, right? They're not just, you know, some random person who, you know, who, who you never speak to and the client never sees. They're part of your team, right? And you're leveraging their abilities to offer the service. We do a lot more stuff, right? We do the sales, we do the, you know, the, the branding of the agency, we build the systems, uh, we build the offer, uh, we manage great talent, right? Um, but the service delivery should always be done by someone who's an expert at that specific field. And you might be asking yourself, why hire now, right? Okay, I understand that we need to get someone in our team, but why do we hire now? It doesn't really make much sense, right? You might be thinking, shouldn't hire a, 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 team, a, a player for a team? Okay, I understand we have to hire a, a, someone for a team, but shouldn't this be done like after I have a client? No, okay, and uh, for a number of reasons. So number one, it's gonna help you loosen up. I used to be nervous to even jump on interview goals, okay? So I understand that these goals really help you loosen up for client goals when you actually try to sign clients, okay? And it's a lower stake scenario and it will help you get used to Zoom goals as well, okay? So it really help you loosen up so that you go into those client goals with, mu with much more confidence. Also, it tightens up your messaging. You're gonna be presenting your agency to these potential team members. They might also ask uh, you questions, right? This will help you tighten up your offer, okay? So very important. It helps you tighten up your, uh, tighten up your offer um, and so that when you go to market, and, and you can be going to market, you can already start reaching out to clients while you hire these, uh, these uh, team members that will deliver the service. But um, this will really help you tighten up your offer. Uh, your offer. The confidence on uh, go, going into a sales call will drastically increase because it, it's helped you loosen up, but also you understand that, you know, you know that you have an A player that can actually de uh, deliver on this service. So it gives you a different level of confidence and psychologically it's very powerful because you truly believe in what you're pitching. And the final thing is you don't wanna rush into a hiring decision. My first three hires were rushed and they weren't A players, they were B players. Okay? They, were, they were good people, but you know, they're not proactive. They, they're not relentless, right? They don't, you know, they, they essentially they're not A players, right? Um, by the time you sign a client, it's already too late to start looking for a team member. So you wanna do that, um, you, you wanna do that as you start because then you have the time to really hire an ama you know, amazing talent. So that is uh, building the team. We've talked about uh, quite a few things now. Um, the only thing that is left is really, how do we sign these clients, okay? So I'm gonna give you uh, at least one method here uh, that is incredibly, incredibly powerful um, and uh, that you can get started with no money, right? And you can get started right now with it. So the first thing we need to understand is the current landscape again, right? Uh, and I wanna prelude by uh, by you, you know, by having you understand this before I give you the actual system that we're gonna be using. So. Uh, Econ prospects spend their day online, their media consumption of choices, social media. This is where we can get in front of them without being a nuisance, right? Worldwide economy. There's absolutely no reason as to why our outreach should be limited by location with e-commerce. We can reach out to any e-com business anywhere in the world. And the final thing, this is the most vital uh, part of, of this to understand the method that we're going to be using, the B2P revolution. What I mean by this is business to people. No longer is it business to business or business to consumers, which would be the case in, with, with e-commerce, right? It's all transformed into business to people, okay? So business to business would be agency to a business, right? We, are, we would technically be business to business, right? An e-commerce business would be business to uh, the customer, right? So we're, they're selling products. However, nowadays it's all about business to people. The lines between personal and business are blurred. More than ever, people buy from people they like, respect, and trust, okay? So understanding this, this is what I call 1D versus 3, uh, 3D outreach. Most people do one-dimensional outreach. We're gonna be doing three-dimensional outreach. So one-dimensional outreach um, methods are things like cold call, cold email, which tend to not have a face and persona attached to them. Um, and those are deteriorating because it's very hard to build rapport and trust with these methods because people wanna to relate to people, right? You want to remember that it's business to people nowadays, right? It's all about business to people. However, the 3D methods are completely different and they take uh, advantage of this business to people um, uh, current landscape, right? So three uh, dimensional uh, methods use social media profile funnels to build rapport and establish authority, okay? We have various touch points with prospects in different forms during the sales journey to close them, right? So it's not just one touch point. It's not just picking up the call, right? Uh, picking up the phone and, and doing a call. It's not just sending out a, a, a cold email um, and they have absolutely no idea as to who you are, right? It's all about having a profile funnel in place so that they can actually see a face to the outreach and, and they can engage with uh, other components um, 
you know, uh, across the, the sales journey. So <clears throat> actually uh, getting uh, specific and, and, uh, and, 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 you know, get into the, the how to actually do this. So the profile funnel explained, here's a brief overview. Okay, we're gonna set up uh, your profiles on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram to state what you do, who you help, and establish your authority. Okay, so at this point, you you know what you do, right? So you're an e-com agency, right? Uh, you should have already picked your sub niche, and uh, you should already know your your uh, your uh, hybrid e-com service, right? So what you want to do uh, is you want to build your profiles on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram to state what you do. Then we're gonna post content as well, designed for your niche to know that you know what you're talking about. This will be a simple value, uh, value drops, stories, opinions, personal breakthroughs, etc., etc. Okay. Obviously, we're gonna match that with outreach and, and approaching people, right? But once we set up our profiles, we find qualified prospects and we begin messaging, them, uh, messaging them. They can then interact with your profile and content, which has an instant as well as a long tail effect. So once we set up our profiles, we find qualified prospects and we begin messaging them. They can then interact with your profile and content. And this has an instant as well as long tail effect, which is massive, right? Let's just say that you actually approach, you, you approach an e-com business, right? Within your specific sub niche uh, on Facebook, right? And so you're not only gonna approach them with a message, right? You're not only gonna sell them on your service, but then you're gonna add them to your profile funnel. So you're gonna add them as a friend. Not only are they seeing your message, okay? Cause you add them as a friend, but they're then gonna see your content around that specific sub niche, right? You're gonna uh, um, essentially uh, place yourself as an authority. And as they see your content, that authority, that trust, that report is built so that the messages land way better on them, right? And they're much more prone, they're much more warmed up to then take that next step to jump in on a call with you to discuss in, uh, that, um, you know, to, to discuss in this in, in further detail, to discuss in selling them uh, on the actual service in further detail. So that is the long tail effect of, you know, uh, building a profile funnel. Uh, on social media, but also the instant effect is if you have a profile funnel, which already has authority. So let's just say, you know, the, you've been doing this for three, four, five months, right? And you've posted content, you've gotten people inside that profile funnel. Now you have that authority so that it also has an instant effect where you send a message, where you approach a, a, a client in that specific uh, space, right? Um, and they see that authority and they're much more prone to actually uh, follow up and, um, and uh, you know, f follow through uh, with uh, with uh, jumping on a call with you to discuss uh, further and to actually uh, sign on uh, with your uh, with your uh, agency. So that is a little brief overview. Um, and going a, a bit further, um, basically, you know, one of the main things about the profile funnel. Um, and again, I just want to make sure that you understand what a profile funnel is, right? You've got Facebook, right? And not only are you just reaching out to them, right? But you've put, you're posting content, and so you're farming these interactions. You're cultivating these interactions. Makes sense. So they're seeing your content on their feed, but they're also seeing your messages. Okay. So that's one of the components of the profile funnel. But the also the other component, the more instant component, you've got a profile uh, to you, right? And so they can, you know, if you send them a message on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram, they can also go on your profile and see the type of content you posted, also see your mission. They can see your face, right? And all this stuff is incredibly valuable because it's not just 1D, right? It's not one dimensional. It's not an email where they don't even see your face. They can see that you're an actual human, right? They can see that you're a, a person who actually is passionate, who actually knows about the this, this specific sub niche, right? Vegan brands, for example. Um, and you're not just a fly by, uh, fly, fly by night opportunist, right? So that is the value of the profile funnel. So most, pro you know, uh, you know, the, the, the reason why it's incredibly vital is because um, it picks up the, the water falling through the, tr the cracks, right? So you need to understand that, um, that most prospects won't convert in our first interaction with them, not even through our follow-up, but we're constantly getting in front of them on their feed. The content and the profile, right? Your profile on Facebook, your on LinkedIn, on Instagram are picking up prospects that fall through the cracks. Secondly, it has a flywheel effect. So at first you have to exert a lot of force, right? But this force has a, has a compounding effect. The more content you have, the easier it is to establish rapport. The stronger your profile is, the easier it is um, to convert strangers into demos. And the final thing is, you're building a massive asset, you know, right? You know, you're building an incredible asset because most outreach has very little uh, longevity. With profile funnels, right? For, for example, because most outreach has very little uh, longevity. If you send an email, that email, especially if you don't follow up, that email is gone, right? If you do a cold call, that cold call is gone, right? With profile funnels. We can get demo calls, strategy sessions, whatever you want to call it, right? Sales calls are booked from content we posted a while back, right? It allows us to duplicate ourselves. And this is the new age. This is the modern way of acquiring clients. I'm not saying email doesn't work, right? If, if done well with, a, with an actual strategy behind it, uh, with automations in place, it does work, right? But this, completely free, right? To get started, you can start right now. 
with your sub niche, posting content, approaching the right people, right? And building these interactions, building, you know, cultivating these interactions and having the, 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 not only the messages speak for you, right? But your profile with your mission, right? Speak for you, your content speak for you as well, right? And it's, it's this really, really cool um, a combination. So uh, things to keep in mind, iterative, okay? This will be an iterative process where you closely monitor performance. I recommend you start with all three platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, okay, at first. But once you see which one is best suited for you and your sub niche, you can narrow down to two platforms, just two platforms. Our priority, okay? We don't wanna explode our ego, we wanna explode our bank account, okay? So don't get too caught up in the vanity metrics of, you know, the likes and the comments, honestly, you can, you know, you could get one like, but as long as your uh, prospects are seeing this content, that is incredibly vital. Okay, that's going to be valuable, much more valuable than someone who's getting thousands of likes, right? But he's not approaching anyone because these likes are not going to ever convert to our uh, customers, right? Because there's no intent behind those likes. It's just for the intention of getting their ego uh, stroked. Make sense? So keep the main thing, the main thing. The main thing is signing clients, growing your bank account, and really taking up a level and leveling up in life, scaling your agency to 10K per month in record-breaking time. And the final thing is we're not content kings, okay? We are business owners. Creating content is not reserved for, you know, the guy of the world. You don't need fancy equipment or an editing crew. The vast majority of our content will be written, will be in written form, right? You can also do videos, but videos, maybe I, I, I could see why, why you could create a bit more friction for, for most people, but the vast majority of our content will be written. It will be within a specific sub niche and we don't have to be Gary V, okay, to be uh, to be able to post content. So guys, that is that for this training. Pretty long one. Um, you know, hopefully you took a bunch of notes. Hopefully you found it of value. If you did, and you don't, you know, you don't want to miss any of the uh, the upcoming videos on e-commerce marketing agency, on social media marketing, digital ad advertising, entrepreneurship, mindset, and much more, uh, go ahead and sub to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you never miss an update. Also, if you haven't liked the video and you got to this point, uh, no, go ahead and, and uh, make sure that you make that, uh, you know, ugly looking gray like button turn blue. I'd really appreciate it. And the final thing is if you are ready to get started and really take things up level with a proven map, uh, map that has generated incredible results for other people, uh, you know, starting their e-com agency, go ahead and check out the link in the description. That is a link to my application form uh, for my personal mentorship. Look, this is not for everyone. I just thought I'd include it because uh, every time I post a video on my uh, on my YouTube channel, I get a bunch of emails, DMs uh, of people telling me to offer mentorship. I even comment as well on, on the YouTube uh, on the YouTube video. So. I'll just include it in the video. Um, if you're interested in that, go ahead and check out the link in the description. It will be the first link in there. All you gotta do is you gotta uh, book in a call, schedule in a call, uh, so you can jump with me and my team and we can see if you'd be a good fit for it. And if you are, then we can get right into scaling your agency to a 10 k month mark in record breaking time. And so with that being said, hope everything is going well in your journey and I'll see you.